Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp where we speak about genomics from the beginner's perspective. This time we will take a closer look at the genomics regions, what we identified previously as some kind of a signals. So you might remember in the FST video we identified a few peaks, but we did not go into really into detail what is in them. Now identifying any peaks or signals is a desired outcome of any analysis uh, from the genomic data. So as a natural follow-up you want to see what kind of genes reside in the region. So in this video we will take two approaches. One is when we want to look at a single region manually and I will show you also a possibility where you can extract genes from hundreds of regions simultaneously using R. So stay tuned and see how it is done. Here we are back in R to explore genomic regions of interest. Now there are two options when it comes to exploring genomic regions. One is a manual mode when you do everything point and click and try to find the genomic regions and the genes residing in genomic regions manually. And the other one, when you use some kind of an R package or any other kind of software to explore the genomic regions by this automated method. Of course, the manual method becomes unfeasible very quickly if you need to explore a lot of genomic regions. So therefore the automated method is somewhat more preferable at least to extract the gene names for the regions that you are interested in. But anyway, I will show you both methods in this video. So the manual method involves some kind of a database and my favorite is the NCBI database where you can find a lot of things in this regard. Now let's say that we have a region on the cattle genome that we are especially interested in and we want to see what genes reside in that region. So what we can do is go for the search bar and search for the cattle genome by typing Bostaurus or just cow. So this is the website for the cattle genome and there is a lot of things to explore here. But what we are interested in mainly are the chromosomes. And let's say our thing is at chromosome 6. And our region of interest is somewhere between 69 and a half and 70, 71 and a half megabase. So what we can do is put such uh, numbers into the search bar and hit search. And that shows us the part of the region we are interested in. And let's say we are interested in this gene that is called kit. So we can also highlight that and uh, well, follow this one up a little bit. This is the web page for the gene itself. So this kid gene is a very known one that influences color traits in many species. Also, this was the reason I selected it for this example. So if you scroll down, so you also see the publications that we, they were done on this uh, particular gene. All of these are clickable. So you could actually check on the abstracts that were made and also you could also get to the full text of the papers if they are available. But anyway, back here, if you are interested, there are also some other options. So there's this homologene database that contains the publications that are ma made on this gene or, or each gene of interest in other species. So this is mostly from, from humans or also could be from mice or any other organism. So there is a lots and lots of citations and papers dealing with this particular gene. Of course, not all genes are so well researched. So in some cases or for some genes, you find much less than this. Of course, the one problem with this point and click approach is that if you need to explore two, three, five, ten, fifty regions, then it becomes tedious and also it becomes a long process that takes days to complete. If you can, then you want to use this time in a more meaningful way. 
So you can apply some other process that extracts the genes for you or even gene functions, depending on how far you want to go with your automated analysis. And this uh, script, uh, what I prepared here shows exactly this process. Now, what we will use is the FST results from last time. So after setting the working directory and loading the same to our packages, the tidyverse and the QQman, we are ready to use the FST results. Just as, as a first thing, a quick visualization, basically loading the FST results as, we, as they were saved and a quick visualization for a reminder. This was the FST plot between the Angora and Gumus goats. And in addition to the last time, I added a horizontal line at 0 0.8 as a threshold so we can specify in which SNPs or in which genomic regions we are interested in. The 0 0.8 threshold is just a subjective limitation and I put in so to identify the regions that are in a highest FST between the two breeds. So the first thing we want to do is to extract these regions and the package that we will be using is called Biomart. So this is why it is called segments for Biomart. And uh, we loaded the FST data and we filter it. So the FST values, we keep the FST values that are higher than 0 0.8 and then uh, specifying a region of interest. Because of the requirements of the Biomart software, we need to specify each region as chromosome, starting position, and end position divided by columns. So it's, as it's written here, chromosome, start position, end position. This is the data file as we loaded it uh, from the previous results. So we have the chromosome, but we don't have the first position and the last position for the segment we want to explore. So instead, what we are doing is taking the position of the SNP with the, which has the FST higher than 0 0.8. And for this region around the interesting SNPs, I decided to go for plus minus 250 kilobases. So this is in a base, uh, well, we need to specify it in a basis. So that is 250,000 minus from the position and plus 250,000 uh, to the position of the SNP of interest separated by columns and keeping just this one line as the future input for the Biomart software. We follow up with the Biomart software itself and uh, well, you need to install this. Uh, I have it already installed. So I already have this one commented out, but it has a, a bit of a specific installation system. So this is how you, how you install it when you use it for the first time. In between, I also ran the, the segments for Biomart part. It turns out that there are about 20 snips of interest. So which is shown here. So we can continue to deal with these 20 regions or 20 SNPs of interest with the Biomart software. Now I have to add that this Biomart software is uh, quite complex and we will show just basically one relatively smart part of it. If you're interested in the entirety of it and want to read much more about the software itself, then so you can do it with this uh, command. So this prosphenes for Biomart. This is a possibility how to get much more information about the, about the software or about the package. So let's run this line and see where it takes us. So it actually opens an HTML file on your computer. So you have a different uh, options here, but if you click HTML, then you get a very long user's guide. Here it has, has a clickable contents and basically you can read to your heart's content about Biomart. And also actually I need to underline that also uh, all of this, which we are going to do in a follow-up steps is actually described also here with some additional text, 
so you can also follow it up afterwards. But to spare you a bit of a time so you don't have to read through all that text just to see how the things work, then I will show you a, the script uh, right here. So there are several steps that need to be taken before you get to the extraction of the genotype regions. The first step is uh, select a host. And in this case, we select the ensemble website or uh, the ensemble database. So you do that. And then also with this use smart uh, option, you select the ensemble database. Within Ensemble, there are a lot of options. And with this list data sets, you could actually specify which data set you are interested in specifically. So if you click this data sets, this, which are loaded, then you see this is actually the list of species that is available. So here there is a lot of options. So regardless of the species you are working in, it's quite probable that you find your database here. In our case, we are working with goats, so we try to find them. So we use this search bar on top and we see that this, that this are this data set with the IRS one version, which is important for us is the name of the data set that we copy and we will use it in the follow-up in the next step, we specify that we are interested in the protein coding genes and uh, we, we are using the data set, the GOAT data set, as we extracted uh, before from the, from the previous set. Another interesting point is which attributes you want to have for your regions of interest. So you uh, and uh, if you don't know, then you can look at the full list and decide yourself that which one, which attributes you are interested in. So what you can do is list all the attributes and see what is available. Again, this could be run as a separate command, but I have an error message here because I'm talking too much and not running things that should be available in R before we are actually getting to attributes. So I'm just running the whole thing. Okay, so now the list attributes function is finished. So I have the, all the attributes available here. So I can click that and see what is available. So there is the name itself is how it should be specified in the script. And uh, the description is a bit more wordy description what it actually means. And then there is a additional categorization here. What you can also notice that you could specify almost 3000 attributes for each genomic region. So it's, it is up to you which one, which one you select. Of course, you can select more than one attribute as we will do in our example. Okay, before I, we actually going to the main thing, we set uh, some filters and then we are actually here at the main part of the script when we extract the genomic regions that we are interested in. So again, these are the genomic regions that have more than 0.8 FST between the two groups or between the two species, the Angora and Gumus goats, as it still shows up on the right side. In this particular example, I went for these uh, attributes, but of course you are free to change and adapt to your requirements. So there are some filters uh, set up. And then the one of the most important parts is also these values. And here comes into play the segments biomart where we actually specified these uh, 20 uh, 20 regions that we are really interested in. Well, it's 20 regions now, but of course, if we would put the line somewhere lower here, so maybe more than uh, 0 0.6, so that will be would be much more regions, so maybe it would be 100 or more regions. So we could actually rerun the same type of analysis with any threshold and basically for any number of genomic regions.
and what get this job done is this uh, get bm function as is the case for all r function functions this get bm also has a help file so you can also read about all the options for this uh, function and what they mean also there are some additional functions i don't use here but so there is a bunch of things that uh, could be set so let's run this and see where it takes us so after a short while we have a new data set in our our environment that is the biomart results so this is of course also clickable and also we have the genomic regions extracted here with the attributes that we selected. So the number of columns here is, would really depend on the attributes you specified. And of course, the number of rows is depending on the number of regions that are explored and also that how many genes are in this uh, particular region. So right now, this Biomart result exists only in R, but I find it a, a good idea to write it out also as a text file, because perhaps you want to send it to somebody else, or you also want to look at it later on, and so that you don't need to rerun the whole R script every time you want to look at the results. So we, what we can do is what we can write it out as a text file. So we already achieved what we wanted. We specified some part of the genome and in a fairly automatized way, we, we extracted a lot of information from those regions. Now, of course, we can take it a few steps further as well. And again, here are a lot of options. So I will just demonstrate one of them. So if you want to post-process the results, so one of the options is that, for example, you want to extract the names that the gene names that are appearing in your data set. Because if you go back to that uh, to those results here, what you see is, uh, yeah, for some reason, some of the gene names uh, or almost all of the gene names repeat a number of times presumably because they are in a different metabolic pathways, so they are shown up multiple times. But for example, you want to have it in a, in a nice table, so you need all the gene names only once. Of course, that is then, then possible with R or any other approach you see fit, but anyway, so I use R here. But anyway, so what you can do or what I do here that I basically extract this uh, one column and then take all the gene names but limit their appearance to a single one in the results with the unique statement and again I write out the list of genes into a text file. So this is how it looks like in R and this is how it looks like in well in the text file that I saved. So I think I will cut it here with the look of the main part of the script with the uh, Biomart package. So this is uh, a way to extract information for many genomic regions simultaneously and sparing a lot of time in the process. I'm fairly sure that this is not the only way how to do it. And uh, if you know about uh, Another way, perhaps even a better way, how to explore genomic regions, then uh, I would be very happy if you write them down in the comments below. Also, in particular, I want to underline that this approach that I'm using here does not tell anything about the functions of the genes. So for that one, there are also specific databases and approaches, but to be very honest, I'm not uh, super familiar with these uh, approaches and extracting gene functionalities and metabolic pathways and all this stuff when it comes to when it comes to post-processing. So, if you are, or if you know about uh, about uh, any of these 
uh, approaches, then, um, as I said before, I would be very happy to read about these uh, in the comments from you. For now, I have been Gabor, and I thank you for your time you invested in this video. I hope you find it useful. If you like the video, give it a like. If you like the channel, give it a subscribe. So thank you for your time and have a nice day.